Okay, this is just a quick video going through the question we were doing in class, which some people seem to have a bit of difficulty, which isn't the end of the world. I think, it, as far as questions go, this was a little bit of a this was a bit of a leap, kind of a bit of a, a cut up above, say, what we we're doing before. Um, just looking at the question, we can see here we have our series of steps, each of them with a angle of 25 degrees. Now, like the pr question before, the important thing here is that this 25 degrees is talking about the surface, not referring to these lines here. So if I drew a line straight along the surface here, that would be 25 degrees. But the true angle of this line here, and say this line splayed back here, won't be 25 degrees. So we will have to find the true angle of those uh, lines before we can take our auxiliary vanishing heights. So the question itself, we're going to go through first of all just how to find the vanishing points and then how to construct the piece. So just going on to find the vanishing points. Um, here we have our piece. Here we can see our object like so. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just going to draw in the vanishing points for my lines moving up here and here, which and our question are level. So for my spectator, take them up, up to find my vanishing point. No new piece there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my vanishing points for a level line running along here. Now we don't have any edge on our piece that runs along it but it's often very handy to take a cut through the piece because along that slice there is all the information that we have about the piece. So you can see here from our front elevation if we were to take that center line there and cut it along that center line this is the profile of what we would see. So all our dimensions are true along that red center line. So all the dimensions that we have here in our elevation are true along that. So that can be very useful. So first thing we do is we'll find him from our spectator as if he was level. And because that's the true angle of the surface, we know that by putting in our angle of 25 degrees along our piece, that's going to give us the rise for that. So that's measured there, marked off here, all you need to do is do that with your compass. And now to find our auxiliary vanishing points for my splayed line here and my splayed line here, um, we're going on one basic feature, something that we've seen before when it came to ducting, and it's the rise and run method. Now if we look at say our surface here, going from here all the way along here, that's the run, say the horizontal distance from here to here. And we know that if we were to draw in our angle of 25 degrees, well, that would be our angle or our slope. So the angle that we would have here is the rise. So that slope surface there is made up of the run here and the rise here. Now, if we look at our splayed lines, well, if this is a height zero, this point here is at the same height because this line here is level. Same way that this point up here, if this is up a height of 41.97 this here is up a height of 41.97 there's no difference so the rise is the same for both our level or for our center line here and for this splayed line here and for this splayed line along here the only thing that changes is the run so we can use that to find our slope same as what we did in our ducting to find our true length so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to capture the direction of my splayed line along here. So the direction, go parallel to it from my spectator. Measure out my distance like we saw there and I'm going to measure up. I'll continue him on to my picture plane so that's my direction sorted. Then I'm going to come up my rise so 41.97 or as uh, you measure with your compass and that gives me my true angle there like that. So that gives me the rise for my auxiliary vanishing point for that tapered line. So take him up that's my direction sorted, take it on again, and that's my auxiliary vanishing point, as we would find them there. So we can do exactly the same thing then, just fading that out, um, for my lines going off in this direction. So again, there's our direction, there's our direction here. We can mark off our run, so the distance from along the length here, and there's our rise again, 41.97, and that gives us our rise for our auxiliary vanishing point. So take them up and add on my distance that I find. So that's my auxiliary vanishing points. So we have three different directions. So we have three different vanishing points. And each of those directions has a corresponding slope. So we'll have three different auxiliary vanishing points. Um, and that's that's your auxiliary vanishing points done for it. So um, that's 
say the, the start of, of our of our question, just the setup of it. And um, when it comes to tackling and drawing in the question, we're going to kind of start start off with kind of or make an approach for it. The first thing is um, our point A here is on the picture plane, so that's going to be our true um, height. So that's going to be our starting off height. The only thing is, I don't want to use that point for absolutely everything. Um, for the simple reason is, if I look at that point, you know, he's not really relating to any of my other edges or my other corners here. It's handy for finding my lines along here, handy for finding my lines along here, but not entirely useful for finding the heights of these areas up here. So, for that reason, I'm taking my center line here and I'm going to use him as a measuring post. Say this point here as a measuring post. Now, just to kind of um, clarify what we're doing here, if we look at our elevation over here, here's our elevation. If I slice that piece along that center line, we said it before, this is the profile we'll see. Um, if you look at how our dimensions are giving to us, given to us, all the dimensions are taken coming down and taken off the front face of our piece here. So our dimensions are coming out along here like that. So if I was to continue them on that slope to our measuring post, well we wouldn't know the heights off the ground. So the height that we have is this height here. There's our measuring post. We mark our distance on our measuring post and we're coming straight across um, onto our line on the very front edge of our piece. So that's the approach that we're going to take. We're coming from our measuring post, which is here. We're going to come straight back in this direction to a point on the front face of the piece and from there we're going to tail up at our slope to give us the top surface of our object. That's the, the idea. So let's look at that. Um, first thing is A comes up and um, that's my front edge so I can take him as a true height. Taking him back to my vanishing point. Find the position. Finds me the front face there. Taking my ground line back to my vanishing point take them there likewise that will find my position and then up to my auxiliary vanishing point for the slope portion so I can just square that up to auxiliary vanishing point and back in that gives me in the the first piece the base piece so my base piece like so I need to locate where I'm going to start my point here so to find the position of him is easy we can do him in a number of ways we could if we wanted um, take him down to my edge over here, which I already have up in my perspective view, down to my spectator, bring it up, locate it up here, and take him across. That will find me that, that line. Or what I can do is I can draw in my measuring post, like so, and mark off my 3.5 meters, and take him straight back. So we have our 3.5 meters. We know my point that I'm looking for here, this point over here, um sorry is 3.5 meters sorry here um so on my measuring post i'm coming horizontally back so no slope um back to my post here on the front surface so that's what i've done i've taken from my measuring post here back to my level vanishing point and that's going to give me my front point there so that's my point there i could done it there say from a plan view taken up that locates me my point there so from that point on my front surface I'm going to go up at my angle get okay, working in the middle of the piece I know this is going this is my true angle of 25 so I can go to my auxiliary vanishing point one so now I want to locate this point here so I can take him down take him up where he hits my slope line gives me my point. So I've now found my point here in the middle of the piece. So with that I'm able to square them out across to draw in that base of my tier 2. So I can take that up. Likewise take... Um, now what I want to do is I want to find the height of them. So I want to go from here straight up along the middle of my piece up to this point here. Again, how am I going to do find this point here? Well I need to go from my measuring post level across to my front post of my object and then up at my slope so six meters up this is my going to my level vanishing point so where he hits my point here is oh sorry where this hits my point here 
is this point. So from there I'm able to take him up <coughs> at the slope. So there he is coming up at the slope like that. And that's going to give me my point there like that. So now I have found this point. So again I square that off, draw in the front face of that second tier and I can take them up to my auxiliary vanishing points to draw in the slope edges, slope sides. So then really we're just repeating the process now. We're trying to find the third tier which is found exactly the, the same way. We have this point here. We want to locate this point here. So in our plan view we have this point here. We want to locate this guy here. So again we're going to take him up along. So there's, he is running right up along the surface like that. So that's him sloping upwards. So do that a little bit there. So there's my my point here. There he is located here. So that's me from my edge just sloping up to the surface. I'm able to square him across, find the, the width of the piece for my plan. And now we want to find our height. So our height here like that. Again, I'm gonna mark off my height, my true height on my measuring post. So that's all pot six, seven, eight and eight point five. 8.5. I'm going to come from my measuring post level to my post in the front piece. So there we are coming back level to my post in the front piece and then I'm going to go up of my slope. Again, really really important that you're coming level first of all from the measuring post to the post at the front of the piece and then up at your slope. That's because you're, you're, you're trying to work with the information that you have in the question itself. That was the way the information was given level and then up at our slope. I mean, if we were given the heights of this point here and this point here, the vertical heights, we could use that and put that on our measuring post. But because in the question we were told all our measurements from this front face here, we have to account for that. And that's why we're doing that. So there we are, level back to our front post, up at our slope, and that locates as our point here. So square them across. That's the front face of the third tier. Again, going to my corresponding vanishing point. So remember our tapered piece goes to our tapered um, vanishing point. A level one goes to a level and so on and so forth. So that will give us our piece like that. So that's our third tier. That's the hardest part of the question. The final part of the question then is just to deal with the uh, circle. So I can just draw in my or my semicircle. Just draw him in like we've done before. Split him up into 30, 60 degrees. Take him up onto our slope surface all of them back down to our spectator up into our view here and we're able to mark off our heights taken from our view here onto our measuring post because that's on the picture plane we can mark that off and we want to go straight across the piece now we don't want to go up at the slope we want to move it straight across so that goes to our VP2 we're not going up at the slope we want to be running maintaining those heights so they go to our VP2 and that's our finished piece and we can just get rid of this guy here then we can just hide him out that's our guy coming back so that's the completed question again don't forget to label all things don't forget to um, label your vanishing points and always remember where your vanishing points come from which direction they deal with which slope they deal with and just from the point of view of making life a little bit simpler on yourself again always remember you mean colour coordinating it makes a handy job of it and um, if you see your measuring post colour him in so he stands out this post here um, where we mark off our pieces before we tail them up at the slope you could you could do yourself a good favour there by colouring him in as well just to have it highlighted and even a little thumbnail sketch like this here it's nice to be able to relate what you're doing in your perspective view to your 2D as well, so at least that way you you see where everything is coming from, um, and hopefully that's some help to you. Um, as I say, it is a tricky enough question, so you know don't feel too bad if you you find it um, difficult at first. It's just getting used to it and getting in on the um, the whole idea is the main thing here. So thank you very much. Good luck.